Hi, and welcome to another video from revisionscience.com, Heart Structure and Function. The heart consists of a range of tissues. The most important one is the cardiac muscle. The cells have the ability to contract and relax through the complete life of the person without ever becoming fatigued. Each cardiac muscle cell is myogenic. This means it has its own inherent rhythm. Structure. The heart consists of four chambers, the right and left atria above the right and left ventricles. The functions of each part are as follows. The right atrium links to the right ventricle by the tricuspid valve. This valve prevents the backflow of the blood into the atrium above. The left atrium links to the left ventricle by the bicuspid valve or the mitral valve. This also prevents backflow of the heart into the atrium above. Chordae tendinae attach each ventricle to its atrioventricular valve. Contractions of the ventricles have a tendency to force these valves up into the atria. Backflow of blood will be dangerous, so the chordae tendinae hold each valve firmly to prevent this from occurring. Semilunar, or pocket valves, are found in the blood vessels leaving the heart. They only allow exit of blood from the heart through these vessels following ventricular contractions. Elastic recoil of these arteries and relaxation of the ventricles closes each semilunar valve. Ventricles have thicker muscular walls than atria. When each atrium contracts, it only needs to propel the blood a short distance into each ventricle. The left ventricle has even thicker muscle walls than the right ventricle. The left ventricle needs more powerful contraction to propel the blood to the systemic circulation. The right ventricle propels blood to the nearby lungs. The contraction does not need to be so powerful. Blood must continuously move around the body, collecting and supplying vital substances to cells, as well as removing waste from them. The heart acts as a pump, using a combination of systole, which is contractions, and diastole, or the relaxation, of the chambers. This cycle takes place in the following sequence. Stage 1. Both ventricles relax simultaneously. This results in lower pressure in each ventricle compared to the atrium above. The atrioventricular valves open partially. This is followed by the atria contracting, which forces blood through the atrioventricular valves. It also closes the valves in the vena cava and pulmonary vein. This prevents the backflow of blood. Stage 2. Both atria then relax. Both ventricles contract simultaneously. This results in higher pressure in the ventricles compared to the atria above. The difference in pressure closes each atrioventricular valve. This prevents the backflow of blood into each atrium. Higher pressure in the ventricles, compared to the aorta and pulmonary artery, opens the semilunar valves and blood is ejected into these arteries. So blood flows through the systemic circulatory system via the aorta and vena cava and through the lungs via the pulmonary vessels. Stage 3. Immediately following the ventricular systole, both ventricles and atria relax for a short time. The higher pressure in the aorta and pulmonary artery than in the ventricles closes the semilunar valves. This prevents the backflow of blood. Higher pressure in the vena cava and pulmonary vein results in the refilling of the atria. The cycle is now complete. Returning to stage 1, the cycle begins again. The hormone adrenaline increases the heart rate still further. Even your examinations may increase your heart rate. The whole sequence above is one cardiac cycle or heartbeat. It takes less than one second. The number of heartbeats per minute varies to suit the activity of an organism. Vigorous exercise is accompanied by an increase in heart rate to allow faster collection, supply and removal of substances. Conversely, during sleep, at minimum metabolic rate, the heart rate is correspondingly low because of the minimum requirements required by the cells. How is the heart rate controlled? It's already been stated that the cardiac muscle cells have their own inherent rhythm. Electrical stimulation from the brain can alter the activity of the pacemaker and therefore change the rate and strength of the heartbeat. The heart control centre in the brain is the medulla oblongata. The sympathetic nerve stimulates an increase in heart rate. The vagus nerve stimulates a decrease in heart rate. These nerves link to a pacemaker structure in the wall of the right atrium, the synatrial node, or SAN. The wave of electrical excitation moves across both atria. They respond by contracting, the right one slightly before the left. The wave of electrical activity reaches the second pacemaker, the atrial ventricular node, which conducts the electrical activity through the Purkinje fibres. These Purkinje fibres pass through the septum of the heart, deep into the walls of the left and right ventricles. The ventricle walls begin to contract from the apex, which is the base, upwards. This ensures that blood is ejected efficiently from the ventricles. Thanks for watching, and as ever, subscribe to the channel for more revision videos, and visit Revision Science for more science notes.